Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. To save Paris from a bloodbath, a grieving scientist is forced to face her tragic past when a giant shark appears in the Senna. Yes, folks, this is our Raw Reaction Review for Under Paris. Oh, shark movies. You know, they are my, uh, I guess, guilty pleasure. Uh, I don't like saying that because you know how much I love them. You know that anytime we have one in the theater, anytime there's like a, a big release of a shark film, uh, I'm usually there day one. It's it's not a tough sell for me. I watch everything from big budget stuff that sometimes can surprise you uh, to everything from, you know, just the low budget uh, swamp sharks or, you know, redneck sharks from hell or something. I don't know if that's a real movie or not. It could be. Should but be. Uh, I I was intrigued nonetheless by Under Paris. I know this is kind of one of those films where Luke is just more or less reviewing it because I got the screener for us. And, uh, you know, he's just hopping on the bandwagon for me because he's a good friend and a great co-host and he, he loves you guys. So I was looking forward to this, though, I have to admit, you know, I we, we covered it a little bit. I don't know if you were on that episode for uh, Beyond the Splatter Graves. I don't know if it was that odd week that you missed a couple weeks ago, but uh, I talked about this very briefly. Evan and Alex completely thrilled. And by that, they had no interest in it. We talked about it for about five minutes. So. I kind of felt like I'm the only person who's looking forward to Under Paris. It's a neat concept. It's a foreign film. So, you know, sometimes when, you know, you, you have something from like France or Indonesia, Korea, uh, they kind of take a stab at something that is traditionally, you know, more of an American thing. We, we tend to make a lot of shark movies. You might get something worthwhile. You might get something really competent. And then you might get something like Under Paris, which is unfortunately just as generic as any other you know sci-fi original shark film yeah i'd say that fits the bill uh pretty well you know going into this one i knew you had put out feels you're trying to get the screener here and then we didn't really hear back and then it kind of just popped up on our radar other than that you know i'd never really looked too much into this film before actually going in and watching it so i didn't even know it was a foreign film um but, you know, as we started, you know, I even find it problematic for me where it's just there's uh, some events that for me were hard to uh, really get into the vibe for. Um, it just did not work for me. So even then, I started feeling really hesitant about the movie because it just seemed like, I don't know, it, it seemed a little off the wall to me. It's definitely uh, an interesting idea here where you have these, uh, I guess they're Mako sharks. Um, is that, I, I mean, like they don't look like Makos all the time, mm -hmm. like sometimes they do. Uh, but like it, it's one of those things where they kind of are, are on out in the ocean just around France and then they come into the, the is it the Siena? They said it like a million times, but I feel like I Siena. I think so. I, yeah. It's tough with an accent. Yeah. Like um, yeah, I didn't watch this with the dub. I watched this with the subtitles. I switched it because the dub was just so poor. Like, there was no yeah. emotion there. But that's a whole other thing. I only watched about 15 minutes of this with the dub. But, uh, yeah, if it, this was one of those things where it was, to me, it, it could have been really cool. In the sense of you have this triathlon going on. You have a bunch of people who are going to be swimming in this little river. And, you know, they sell you on the fact that, you know, there's a killer shark in there. Um, and, you know, I will say we're, we are specifically not supposed to give certain things away uh, from Netflix here, but there are a handful of little twists and turns that this takes that in my eyes when they first came up could have been really fun, could have had some really cool things uh, happen with them. I just feel like they literally like they set that concept up and then they get rid of it so quickly and they don't use it. And it's like, why? Why would why would you do that? Why would you give us this genuinely one of the cooler shots in the movie involving this thing I'm not allowed to talk about? And it's like, why would you set that up and then not use it? Because I think that's where this movie could have really uh, found the fun where it's like, OK, yes, it's a very generic shark movie. But once you get into the third act, it's a complete bloodbath. It is an absolute insanity. You know, something akin to a Piranha 3D. And, you know, I at least would have walked away saying, 
hey, movie's all right, but that third act is fun as hell. And no, they they keep it pretty uh, just to the straight and narrow generic throughout this entire film. Yeah, you know, it's looking at it, shark films are a hard sell for me because they're so hard to get right. You don't think they would be hard to get right, but they apparently are where, you know, I think if you're telling that uh, straight narrative and you want to be really serious, I think you kind of need that uh, more intimate tone. And as we are getting into Under Paris, um, you know, I, I think they make use of the setting in terms of visually. But, you know, I could tell that the story was getting a little too big and it was losing that intimacy that we get with those characters. You know, you always look at Jaws and uh, the scene where they're always having those heart to hearts and Quint, you know, is, is telling his story. Um, and you really get that kind of background and you start feeling for those characters. Um and you have that intimacy. But as this one was, it just seemed like it was getting too broad. And I think maybe at that point, you have to kind of almost pivot and just be a really fun shark film. So, you know, that's what, as we are getting into this, I was hoping for. Because, you know, I found some of the concepts at the very beginning a little off the wall for me. So I was like, okay, maybe we're going to have a lot of fun here. Um, but then as you get into it, and for me, I felt the runtime on this. The, the pacing for me was really slow. Um, and I watched this thing straight through and, you know, I was expecting more for, you know, the world that they do open up, but they don't really make use of anything. It really does just fall into that generic storytelling, you know, kind of using modern devices. You really don't have, you know, I didn't feel any tension in this for a shark movie, unfortunately. It's like, and that's one of the things you always want, um, is kind of, you know, the fear of the unknown, this thing's underwater and you, as soon as the dorsal pops up, you have that pure terror. And I never got that here. It was just kind of like that basic storytelling. I didn't know, you know, if this was just it, just random storytelling because it doesn't feel like it's in that suspense, in that thriller, anything like that. It was just like, huh, here's a shark. And it was just so mundane, I guess, for me. Yeah. And, you know, I got to admit, there are a couple of ideas in here that I thought would have been so ripe for building tension and like one of those specifically is uh there's this whole pollution angle to this film and they talk about just how dirty uh the river is in paris there and uh just how like they they literally have characters go underwater uh in their wetsuits and you see all this trash all this pollution around so it really especially in this one shot that i'm talking about at night uh with this kind of red light so they can see it really adds a sense of atmosphere when it's just dirty water and garbage floating around where it's like there is a literal wall of things in front of you. Something could just come right through at any moment. But then they they do something with it. And, you know, I'm sorry. I know this isn't the biggest budgeted film, but like they rely so heavily on CG and these sharks look so fake when they're moving that when you do something, especially with a shadow, it looks like something straight out of Peter Pan. Like, I mean, it, it literally just looks like a goofy little kid's drawing just shooting across the screen. And it just immediately sucks all that tension out of there. It's like, I know, like, people, especially, again, I don't know the budget for this film. But most of these films aren't relying on practical effects. Now, I will admit, there's a few practical effects sharks in here. They are very, very hit or miss. One of them looked pretty good at, at one point. Then uh, later on, not so good. Um, but then it's just one of those things where it's like, if we could just go back to the level of Deep Blue Sea. I know that's not a film that you love, Luke. I, I We reviewed it a long time ago. But those sharks looked great when they used the practical effects. And I that is one of those things when it's like, to me, why can't we just go back to that? Why can't we go back to the Stan Winston era of practical effects animatronics for at least a majority of it? Because, like, I get it. When you have these big set pieces and you want to launch people out of the water and stuff, go ahead. Use the CGI. I get it. But why does it have to be every single shot? Because to me, that you're never going to build tension that way. Because water is already hard enough to convince people with. And the fact that they can't just put a practical effects shark in there at least some of the time, you're never going to, you know, at least get that fear out of me. And I'm afraid of the ocean. So it's like, what the hell? Yeah, it's that fear of the unknown and, and, you know, shark films should be so easy to build that tension when you do have that intimacy and, you know, because it's just this blanket of of 
nothingness. You can't see anything. So, you know, you don't know what's under there. But when they keep showing the sharks off, and you're right, they're so inconsistent in, in one film here where it's like, you know, I, for me, I know that, you know, smaller budget films, we're not going to look at the most convincing sharks. I'm just looking for not offensively bad. And I got to be honest, I think from the very beginnings here, you know, I was like, whoa, this is not great for me at all. And, you know, again, the, it was a hard sell from the first five minutes. And then it kind of just got worse from there because of the inconsistency. Well, one of the reasons was the inconsistency in the quality of how the sharks look. Because there are some, I, you know, I would say laughably bad CGI sharks uh, <laughs> uh, throughout this thing. So it, it does become one of those things where it's not fun enough to really lean into the bad quality of the CGI. Um, so, you, you know, you have to look at it more so from a serious standpoint. It just doesn't work. Um, so, you know, again, this film is just so generic in its storytelling. It doesn't really offer anything new. Yeah, you, you said they presented, you know, some intriguing, like, grains of ideas. And I agree with that where, you know, if they would have really zeroed in and focused on some of those ideas and really opened them up i think they we could have had a unique story here but you know it, it just seems like they pull back and kind of fall back into that cookie cutter uh storytelling you know and you know by the end of it i was just waiting for this thing to be over with because you know um that third act for me did not work at all i was there's uh something that really big that goes down and it got such an eye roll for me where I was like, I can't believe this is in a shark film. It just felt like it did not fit at all. Um, so for me, honestly, this one is a slash hit. It just did not hit anything for me. It just, you know, I was hesitant going in. And I even I have a low bar for shark films, especially not big budgeted shark films. So, you know, I was just looking for more of a condensed storytelling. And I didn't get that here. There are, you know, a couple of good shots. They make use of some of the scenery. But, you know, the, the concept behind it, I think they're... More, more teeth to it and they never really took advantage of it so you know for me i will one and done for under Paris for me i still think that this is going to be a very low proceed with caution for me and i'm only coming at that as a shark fan if you're a horror fan if you are looking for like just a regular movie fan looking for a shark action horror film this is not it um, and I'm only giving it a proceed with caution because again, I've seen so many of these and believe it or not, I've seen ones that are worse than this, even though I have been pretty harsh on this film. It's I think because I was expecting, you know, with this kind of being touted as Netflix's, you know, new shark film, again, it being a foreign film, I thought this could have really had, uh, like Luke said, some teeth. But it didn't. It just, again, falls into those tropes. But I think if you are someone like me who watches these CGI monster fests on your weekends, you know, this is a great Sunday morning, throw it on, do some chores around the house and, and just have it playing in the background. And then the most interesting scenes you'll kind of look into and then that'll be it. Um, it's not a great rating, but I, if I'm being my honest self, that's where it sits for me. Um, and yeah, I, th I think that, you know, I, I, I'm severely disappointed in this. I, I don't want to really push this as something to spend your week seeing. Uh, but if you are still interested and you don't want to take our word for it, uh, this thing will be available on Wednesday, the fifth on Netflix. So all you gotta do is have a Netflix account and you can watch this bad boy. So with that too, I guess that could also justify my rating because, uh, just like us, we got a screener for it. Um, there is no, if you have a Netflix account, you don't have to pay for this. So it's not like you're paying for a movie ticket. There's a positive. There you go. Uh, and last little piece, we won't touch on this, but I had to mention this and I completely forgot until now. There's a mayor character in this. They are fucking terrible. And I, I only say that because they are so annoying. They're so generic. Every scene with them, I wanted to rip my eyes out. I was so over it. It was like... How can you write somebody so over the top and expect me to take your movie seriously? Like, Jesus, Lord. All right, guys, that's going to wrap us up here for Under Paris. Uh, you know, another one bites the dust as far as shark films go. But uh, maybe one day I'll be able to come on our show and say something positive about something that's coming out when it comes to sharks. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. So uh, thank you, Netflix, for sending this over. We do appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah. We got a lot of great stuff up on the channel, guys. We talked about the most controversial film, it seems like, of the weekend was In a Violent Nature. 
Uh, we sat down with Evan and Jake. And uh, yeah, we talked about that for like an hour and 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, big video, lots to discuss. But I think it's a very cathartic watch. If uh, you saw that film and you've been kind of mixed on it or you love it or you hate it, I think there's a little bit of everything in there for everybody. So check that out. And yeah, other than that, it's going to wrap us up. So until next time, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. The hard shit gonna do it live. Press splatter cast kick it every day they lie. Splatter cast, 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 splatter